So Adobe just came out with an update for After Effects and Premiere Pro, and it includes one really cool feature. Actually, go ahead and take a look. Yeah, now they included content to wear fill for video. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look. For anyone that's not familiar, the content to wear fill is when you make a selection. Here I'm using the lasso tool in Photoshop. You make a selection around a subject that you want to remove. So here I'm going to go up to edit and content to wear fill. And what happens is basically it takes the surrounding pixels and it uses an algorithm to determine what will be in that spot or what would be in that spot if the subject wasn't there. You'll notice that on the right hand side, the boat's now gone. There are clouds up where the clouds should be. There's replacement water in the area where the water is. Now for what it's worth, to be honest, this is not exactly flawless. Of course, this is trying to generate things that aren't there. So you might start to see artifacts or things that seem as if it's out of place. But I wanted to show you this because this feature has been in Photoshop for a while. And as mentioned, now they've brought it over into the video side. Now, of course, in this case, what I would do is a little clone stamping where I'm taking another part of the image and bringing it over. Um, I, I do a little bit better job than I'm doing now, but it would be a little bit more seamless where you wouldn't be able to tell exactly where the subject used to be. Okay, that aside, let's go over into After Effects and check out this new feature. Here we have some footage of a car driving down the road. What I'll do is come up and I'm going to draw a uh, mask around the car. You'll see I selected the footage at the bottom there and now I'm going in selecting our car here. Now obviously, unlike Photoshop, the subject in our footage is going to inevitably move. So what we need to do is take that mask and then track it throughout the footage. Before we start tracking, what I'm going to do is come over to the mask and choose the subtract option because that is what we're going to need for the content to wear, Phil. So once everything's been tracked, you can see the keyframes at the bottom. You can see this window here, and that is our alpha expansion. Basically, we have our selection, and if we want it to be larger, we can slide it to the right. A little bit smaller, we can slide it a little bit to the left. And that essentially controls the area around our selection. You'll see that we have other options such as surface and edge blend. I'll leave the range on work area, but we can do the entire duration of the clip or the work area. In my case, work area is fine. And then I'll click on generate fill layer. You'll notice at the bottom, it's already generated an extra layer and that's the fill layer, but it's still doing the analyzing on the right hand side. Obviously it has to go through all the footage, make its analysis, and then it will have to generate frames after that. So we'll allow it to go through its motions right now. Now it's already done its analysis and it's rendering those right now. But if we zoom in, you'll notice that's a little strange looking and that's because of the fill method that we used. This would depend on the type of footage that you have or what exactly you're trying to track within your footage. So just that we can get a different result, what I'll do is up the alpha expansion to a higher number, and then I'll change the fill method to surface instead of object. And then we'll run through that entire process again. Now you'll see that it's done a lot better job. And if we zoom in, you'll notice that it's a lot cleaner. Obviously we could continue to do a little bit more cleanup, but you also have to keep in mind that if nobody's looking for it and they never knew that anything was there in the first place, they might not even notice any discrepancies, especially if they're not familiar with the location of your footage. One quick thing I wanted to mention while this is rendering out, I know I didn't go too deep into this application. This was just released. If you guys want an in-depth video, I can make one in the future. I just wanted to show you guys two cool new features in both After Effects and Premiere Pro. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and hop over to Premiere Pro and check out something over there. So here we are, we have the project panel over on the left hand side. I'm going to hit the tilde key so that it fills the screen. So you'll have something like this where you have all your clips and you don't have too much flexibility. I mean, you could click on a clip and drag it over. You can reorder them that way.
Of course, another thing you could do if you wanted to group your clips is to create something like a new bin and then that way you can you could treat it as a folder and put certain clips in one bin and put different clips in another bin. But with the newest release of Premiere Pro, we have the freeform panel. So now you have total flexibility to move your clips wherever you want, putting the footage that was shot on the table into one area and then putting the remainder of the clips into a different section. But not only the flexibility of being able to move your clips around, you can actually adjust the size. So let's say this was the primary clip. I can right click, go to size, and make it large. Honestly, I didn't see the benefit of this at first, but I can absolutely see how if you wanted to storyboard ideas, that this is more visually appealing than having to scroll through all your clips in the bin. Now there were a lot more updates in the new Adobe release, including rulers and guides within Premiere Pro, new features within Audition and performance upgrades overall. I'll link everything in the description below. If you want more in-depth tutorials about any of this stuff, go ahead and let me know. Reach out to me on Twitter, check me out on Instagram. Go ahead and subscribe by clicking the logo in the middle of your screen, and I'll talk to you soon.